Hey, everyone. <laughs> so today, does everyone know what day it is, actually? So it's Sunday, the 4th of July. Yeah. 4th of July. So it's actually American Independence Day. So they were really kind to have their Independence Day on Gary's fourth anniversary here at the church. And so there's big celebrations happening in America and right here. So yeah, this is legitimately Gary's fourth year when he was called to come here as the pastor. Hasn't that gone quickly? It's like, wow, it's gone so quickly. And I look younger too. Oh, you do. I constantly tell you it's because you're married to me. I, I just don't know why you don't understand this. <laughs> no, jokes aside, we're really blessed this morning, not only because we have our beautiful family have come along um, to be here. So we've got all of our boys and girls are here today. Um, and of course, you, yeah, thanks, let's give my big hands up. And my mum, who is part of our church, of course, is always here. She sits here. Sometimes someone said, is she Gary's mum or is she your mum? So she's my mum. <laughs> Yeah, so we're really blessed by that, and thank you for being here. Um, Andy had already come, and she's whispered in our ear that the pig is in the building. <laughs> so where is a pig on a spit, and we're going to have a feast after. So that's pretty exciting. Thanks for that heads up, Andy. And isn't it great that Andy gave her life to the Lord a few weeks ago? Yeah. Honestly, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, and we've journeyed with her, and we, we've, we've known Brendan for many years, in fact, Brendan was in the youth group when Gary first started at TBC, and um, he had blue hair, and he was a little bit edgy. And uh, he had a mohawk, and then he, he had, had a stuff mohawk, and he had all sorts. But um, he is so we've journeyed with them for many, many years with Brendan, and yeah, it's such a, a cool place when we've had people who have come on this journey, and they're still part of our life. And this is part of our new life. It's been four years, so it feels so fresh, but yet it's four years down the track. Yeah. Cool. I was, just, um, I was thinking you've got to be careful when you say this if the pig has arrived. Why? What could we else could I be talking about well, apart from a real... Well, because well, I only mentioned <laughs> lamb, right? I only mentioned oh, lamb in the last yeah. two weeks. So you say the pig's arrived, everyone's going, what are you saying? So, no, but we got a pig instead. So they couldn't get the lamb in the end, but they got the pig. So I think the lamb ran away, but the pig was too slow. They got them. So. That's going to be yummy, though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Hey, look, um, just as we, we begin just some reflection, and we've called this um, the, the journey, so honoring and celebrating, and um, I just want to acknowledge um, that it's Matariki at the moment, and uh, I just want to acknowledge that space because it's actually quite significant that it's now on the anniversary of four years um, uh, so Matariki, as, as, as you know, uh, I don't know if you know much about it, but um, it actually identifies um, a star cluster in the sky. And, um, and uh, there are nine stars, although some might identify that there are seven, but there are nine. It also, if you look it up, if you Google that, it also, they call it the Pallades. And it can be seen all over the world. And different cultures celebrate um, different things around this cluster of stars. But here in, uh, in Aotearoa, we celebrate Matariki, and, um, and the Māori do a fabulous job of this. I was, I was uh, sitting with Harry, um, who's a teacher. He had to do some PD, and he had to watch um, an hour-and-a-half documentary on, on Matariki, and so I sat there and, and watched pretty much all of it with him, and uh, it was just fascinating how the story got told um, and uh, how the stars became to be and who they represent. And as I was listening to the story, I was thinking wow, Māori have actually got a really good way of telling creation and talking about creation in this space. And um, I was just fascinated with that parallel because, you know, many, many, many years ago before um, maybe Christ was known here in Aotearoa, how would you tell him or how would you talk about creation? You know, if I, if I didn't know God, how would I talk about creation? And, and as I listened to the story, I was fascinated by it and I thought, Māori had a really, really great way of telling the story of creation. And then um, I was fascinated to go on just to learn more about um, this, this, this time of year and that, you know, the sun represents um, the seasons. So depending where it is, it represents a season. The stars represent the months and the moon represent the day. And so 
Marty, I, unbelievably, I, this is so good. This is so good. They use creation to tell them when they would plant or when they would harvest or what they would do on a particular day, depending on how the sun, the stars, and the moon were positioned. So they use creation to order their day. We use a calendar. I think they're smarter than us. They use creation. What a great way. I mean, God put that in place, right? You know, the Bible talks about um, the Pallades as well. In, in Amos 5.8 and in Job 9.9 and in Job 38.31, the Bible talks about this cluster of stars as well. Um, and so God has placed some importance on that. It's really, really fascinating. But here's the big celebration, right? This is the end of the Māori year and the beginning of a new year. And so it's a celebration or a remembering of all the work, all the mahi that has been done, everything that has been done, and looking forward to the prosperity and everything that the new year will bring. And so why I mention it is because it's kind of like, well, this is exciting because for me, I celebrate these kind of moments of, well, that's what's been. I'm looking forward to what's coming ahead. And so I wanted to use Mataraki as a, as a bit of a bit of a marker in terms of that journey. And for, for all of you and for our family in particular, we, we celebrate on occasions. So it might be a birthday, it might be an anniversary, it might be that someone's got a new job or something else is going on in the life of someone. So for our family in particular, we would place that really high. That's a huge priority for us. And being together as a family is a massive priority. Um, so we want to build into those times. So if it's someone's birthday, we want to use that opportunity to speak words of life and truth and hope and promise into those people. Um, because that actually is what helps people and encourages them. It helps them to move forward. We definitely, we might have some jokes and laughs, but um, a celebration for us is about being kind and thoughtful and considered. And that's what being in this church too, it's about kindness and consideration to others. Um, and that is a celebration in itself. So that is what um, we do as our family. And, and what I love with those, all these words you came out with this yeah. morning, and I'm sure there were more. So, you know, the, the, the real fondness for the older generation, friendliness, kindness, um, what's that word? I can't even read my own writing. Supportive, community ministries, um, no judgment, a heart to reach out, hearing from God. These are all things to celebrate mm. what this church is about. You know, and, and you can all sit there and you would have all had something in your mind about why I come, why I sit, why I'm involved here, why you love this place. You would have had something in your mind, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so I want to begin by just acknowledging God. Deuteronomy 10.21. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Now, he's talking to Israel, and he's talking about the miracles and, and, the, and what he did when they came out of Egypt and all of those things. But we still see with our own eyes the things that God is doing, right? We see salvation. Andrew Aldridge, we see salvation. We've seen it with our own eyes. He is the one you praise. He is your God. And as we've talked about too before, it's a stirring in your spirit. Mm. You know, when you're sitting in church or you might be somewhere and you start to get that fluttering feeling and you know something's going on, you get a little bit of a, oh, yeah, something feels like it's going on inside and you know, actually, this is, I need to deal with something. If something's missing, I need to acknowledge something. Um, and I know you're about to kind of briefly share about how you came here, but that was what it was like for you. Mm. Um, you had been in your role in the in the Baptist Union office there for was it eight years? Eight years, yeah. And you were you were walking around and you were like, I feel like God's leading me into a new season. It's that stirring of your spirit, mm -hmm. and you know it took you on the streets, wandering around, and and you kept walking past here, you kept walking past this church, and you and then you're like came home. It's like oh, Neil Baker's just um, resigned. He's finishing up and he's he's going on to a, a new season. And then I could see it was like 
his cogs in his head were going round and round. There's no brain in there. It's all mechanical cogs. <laughs> <laughs> it was all going round and round and round. And, you know, it was that stirring in his spirit. And it was that journey that you went on for, mm. I think it was about eight months. It was quite a while, yeah. 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 So mm. I really believe that God positions mm. each and every one of us mm. for his purposes, yeah? Mm. So each and every one of you are here because God has positioned you here for his purposes, for this church, for this community, for this nation, for, this king, for his kingdom. Mm. He's positioned you here. Um, for me, it started in 1998. In the shower. Now, okay, <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Don't picture that. <laughs> this is a PG so <laughs> show here. PG. So it started in the shower, and most people in the shower sing, right? But when I'm in the shower, God gives me vision. He, he allows me to see things. And I saw, I had a vision of a church in 1998 planted deeply into its community. And it was planted so deep that this church was meeting the needs of the people in the community and helping people discover that their greatest need actually was to find Christ. We called this thing uh, back in 1998, we called it the Waitakere Life Center. And uh, we actually, as a church, we went and bid on three guys in Glen Eden, if you remember that. Um, we went and bid on that building but didn't get it. And um, the dream was to have budgeting and to have food, to have a gymnasium, to have a number of services that would meet people's needs. And so for years, I carried this vision and was never able to see that vision worked out in the church I was in. It just never came to life. Um, and so I just held it and held it. And then 2017, when God called and I listened, although I didn't listen very well at first, but God called and he called me to this beautiful place, Glen Eden Baptist. Um, in fact, he had already planted in, in me and planted in my family this journey five years before we came here because he shifted us from Green Bay to Glen Eden. And we were already living in the community. And when you as a church said yes to God's call upon my life, when you discerned and heard that call of God, God revealed the dream again in me. And he showed me that when I walked onto this Whenua, when I walked into this land, to this campus, he said, the dream is happening here. Mm. It's already here. Mm. It was just amazing to see how God had given me a dream and then he placed me. Mm. And he said, here it is. Mm. Here's the dream. Here's what you've been holding. It's happening right here. This church is doing it here through this trust. It's actually probably interesting to note that Gary's one of the very few pastors around New Zealand that have, have never had to move location to go into a church. You know, you think of Andrew and Andrea, who we, for a moment we need to think about them. They're at Belmont Baptist today. This is their first Sunday. So we think about them today. Um, as Malia was singing, I th was thinking about them today but their journey will take them across. I mean, okay, it's in Auckland, but it's still a journey. They go across the bridge and they will relocate that way. And Gary's been, um, I don't think there's hardly anyone that ever moved to the area before. And so it was just for him, it was an eight minute walk down the road. A it's like God positioned us five years before. And we had people who said to us, why would you move to Glen Eden? You know, it's like, you've got a much nicer place where you are and, you know, and it was like, it felt right. It's like, and I think that's a lot of our journey is it feels right. And why does it feel right? Because God's in it, you know, and God goes before us and he leads the way and he, he makes everything happen for us, which actually leads us, um, I just wanted to share. Now, this was because what Gary had just been sharing before about like a prophecy almost for him, but this was a prophecy that came for the church in 2007. Now, um, Gary's cut it down a bit. Um, it's so to bear with me a little bit. It's very, it's still long, but it's powerful. God showed me you are a church with a big heart. And I saw a picture of a large red heart. The other impression was the wind of the Holy Spirit bringing a wind of change like a new chapter opening in the life of this church. 
You have been the hands and feet of Christ to the minorities, the lonely, the downcast, those that others would turn away from and turn their noses and walk away from. As a result of your care and prayer for these people, God is going to bring economic breakthrough both for them and your church as a reward from the Lord for your work. For you long, sorry, for for too long you have been hampered by lack of finances that have held you back from doing all that God has laid upon your hearts. I also feel God wants to break through in areas where local government red tape has held you back. God will bring breakthrough in these areas. I see breakthrough in finances for home loans, for better housing and sanitation for people. Possibly in the future, the establishment of a village community housing concept to bring a real sense of community to people's lives that have been so very fragmented and dysfunctional. Because of the big heart you have, God will bring a fresh wind of breakthrough and of transformation, transforming your church and the community around you as you become even greater agents for change and witnesses for the Lord among the people. Don't believe that the plan is too bold. Don't believe the vision to be too great because God wants to bless your efforts and your faithfulness and show you great favor among the people. Then I saw a man, I presume the pastor, sitting at a table like an angled draftsman's table and he was writing with an old-fashioned writing quill made from a feather And the Lord was standing behind him, watching over him as he wrote. This is a vision that you have had for some time now, and you have had to lock it away in your heart, awaiting the right time. I see the Lord releasing angels to bring these things about, to begin the release of what God laid in your heart years ago, to bring the breakthrough you have been praying for. At times, it may have felt like a pregnancy as you have waited patiently like an expectant parent would. Wait for the birth of a precious child. I saw you lay hands on your leadership team and impart them the vision God has given you. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Especially the words coming through of community and about the plan of the heart, the village, but the pastor the heart and the things that are being stirred in his heart, the pastor's heart. It's like now, four years on, maybe when we were read that when we first started, it didn't mean the same, but the prophecy is now becoming much clearer this mm. far in. Yeah. It's it's exciting, isn't it? It's exciting. And um and and I, I love what the prophecy says, be bold, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, God's gonna supply because you know, some of the things that are <coughs> before us um, look large, but God's bigger than all of that, way bigger than all of that. And um, if it's His will, there'll be a way, mm. and and these things will come about. And um, you know, when I when I read that, when I first read that, it, it brought a tear to my eye because it just I resonated with the the part about the past. I thought, wow, that just feels like me in that space. It really did feel like me in that space. And so I want to um, just a couple of things here. So. You know, coming to this church for me was a transforming moment in my life. I mean, what does a youth youth pastor of 31 years know about leading a church? Nothing. You know, um, you you took a gamble. You took a gamble on a youth pastor leading your church. You really did. And um, because I've not led a church before. I've led a bunch of young people and, and youth leaders. But that's a different world, man. That's a whole different planet altogether. And, um, you know, it's almost a planet on its own, in fact. And, uh, you know, being the leader of a church is a much broader picture. And uh, one that's, you know, once you get your head into that, actually you start to see things in a new perspective for the first time in my life. It was life transforming. Um, I started to realize how much of an idiot I was as a youth pastor at times. And, um, and some of the things I would say to the, um, the senior pastor about youth ministry and stuff and what we demanded 
And I thought, yeah, what an idiot I was. You know, like when you get a bigger picture, there's much more going on than just that. It's important, but there's much more going on. You know, I believe God gifts us to fulfill His purposes, and God places us with other people. And so I want to honor, I want to honor the eldership of this church. You know, you have, as the people of God, have, have prayed, you fasted, and, and you have chosen elders to lead this church. And uh, I want to tell you that they are amazing people, men and women of God. Um, they are prayerful for this place. They really, really care about each and every one of you. They really do, and they really care about the life of this church. Um, and, and it's just an honor to work with them because th they free me, but they chase me. They support me, and they hold me accountable. Um, and I appreciate everything that they do in that space. They are incredible. Y you should be very proud of the eldership you have in this church. Um, they are, would be one of the best group of elders I think I've ever had the pleasure of working alongside. You really are very, 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 very blessed by that. I also want to honor the volunteers. Um, and I know we did this last week, but I want to do that again because, you know, there's a lot that goes on in a community that we call church. There's a lot that goes on. Um, and when a community gets to a certain size, there has to be structure, there has to be organization. Things happen, programs happen. Um, stuff happens, and um, the volunteers that have been involved here that I've seen over the last four years, thank you so much. You know, like, I, we've not started a new program since I've been here. We've not pushed for new volunteers since I've been here, but you have been faithful, and you have served, and you have done above and beyond, and I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for the mahi that you do in this place. It is incredible. It really, really is. I want to say I absolutely love this place. It's unique. It's making a huge difference in this community and in this nation. Lives are being changed. Um, we've had a number of people come to faith in this church during Sunday gathering. A number of people. We've had some crazy baptisms with Chris taking his shirt off. I've not seen that before. But we've had some great baptisms. We've had people jump in with the fully clothed because they came and God moved them. And they jumped into the pool of baptism because they felt that that's what they needed to do. And we've got a baptism service coming up. We're going to do one next Sunday. Um, for a gentleman you haven't met yet, but you will. He's connected to our trust and he's connected to Ranui Baptist. He's an ex-gang member, a solo dad with six children. But he wants to walk with Jesus. And he wants to get baptized here with a whanau from, from, the community, uh, from our community housing here. It's going to be a fabulous day next Sunday. And if you want to get baptized, you come and see me at the end of the service. You know, also, this, you know, the conversations that happen around this place day in and day out, because community are moving in and out of this place all the time. It's like their marae. They just, they come and they go and they, they make themselves at home and we have conversation every day. And there are some great conversations we have with people in this place. You know, I, I can't forget last Sunday, Derek sleeping on the doorstep at quarter to six in the morning. Invited him in. He slept for two hours on the couch before I could give him a coffee. And then had a good chat with him about his life. You know, he's, he's chosen to live in the bush. Um, so he could afford to go around and see this beautiful country that God has made. And um, he's quite, he's quite on to it. Um, and then, you know, we came for prayer night last Sunday night. And Derek was asleep in the doorstep again, you know. Um, but I love these people. I love that this is a church that we just welcome whoever rolls in. No matter how they come, we welcome them. I love that about this place. You know, one of the standout moments was last year at Five Days of Christmas when we had a Sunday where we worshipped by packing boxes together as a whanau. What an incredible day that was. And, I, and I'll never forget the father who came to me and said, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You know, my children, they were asking if they could get the toys. And I said, no, we're packing this for someone else. 
And he said, they got it. They got it. I went, what a beautiful story that is, that as a church, we would work together generationally, that we would come together and serve like that, and our young ones would learn a lesson about life that would have been very hard to learn in any other context. I love that. It's a stick-out moment for me. This church, Glen Eden Baptist, has in its DNA deeply ingrained mission. It's not just the way you support and love our Trust Vision West, but it's the way you support and love everybody who comes into this building. I'm so grateful. I just want to share my thoughts on this church because from my perspective, I'm not down here throughout the week because I'm working in the week and I hear Gary's stories. He comes home and he shares his stories. So from my perspective, I wanted to share what it's like coming in on a Sunday or for different events that happen that I just want to echo that this is a really welcoming place. Um, I think... You know, we've talked before about our outstanding welcomer of the year, of course, is Paul Baird. Um, <laughs> and, and Paul was the person that actually, we came on a secret recce mission before Gary um, chose to move forward with this role. And we came and we snuck in the back, but no, we weren't going to sneak past Paul. <laughs> and he, and then, because then other people who knew us already here came up to say hi and then Paul was like, oh, so do you know these people here? And it was really interesting because we were trying to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we just popped in. and yeah, We live in the area. We it's live in the cool. area. We're just looking for the church. And But, you know, um, the start of that welcome actually goes through the whole place. Now, I always want to say here too, and that I hear the story sometimes. People come into a church and they say, oh, but I don't really feel welcome or... I come and I don't, I don't really engage in the church or um, I don't know how I fit into the church or no one really talks to me or something like that. And I've said this a little while back. You know what, guys? It's up to each of us. Um, it's up to each of us to make a difference in this place. You know, you, you can be in a group, a life group, and we've, we recently um, have started one probably a few months back, eh? four or five months back, and we've got quite a diverse group of people that are coming along, um, and we'll get to know them better than we will some others in the church. But it's actually up to each of us to get involved. And I would hate for you one day to leave walking out and think, oh, I wasn't really connected with, because there's so many beautiful people here. You know, the cafe afterwards is a place where it's safe to just go and sit and talk with someone. And you're welcome to move into groups. doesn't matter if you think, oh, that group looked like they're having a really serious conversation. You know, this is a really awesome place of community and fellowship and refuge. Andy, you said that before. You can come into that place. And, and I love that about this place. Um, for Gary and I, um, Barry and Joy had taken us under their wing and they meet with us regularly. And, um, and I find that really encouraging. They're just a little bit ahead of us on their parenting journey and their life here in the church. So for us, it's we've got the four children and we've got the our extended families, and I and it's really nice. That's a place of refuge for me. Um, since I started here with Gary, um, of course, I had my travel business, and that was a really successful business. Um, and now my travel office is a storeroom. And, um, you know, it's heartbreaking, to be fair. You know, if I'm going to lay it out there, there's nothing worse than seeing your awards sitting around a room and the certificates on the wall, and they're surrounded now by just storage. You know, it's like that season at the moment, or maybe it will never come back, is gone, um, and I'm in another place. And I shared with Abby recently, and Abby, man, what a beautiful heart she has for the women and the families in this church. And she's real and she's honest. And that's what I love about all our pastoral staff. That's why Shannon fitted in so well with this team because they're a team of people that actually, they're okay. They can take the hard knocks of life. Um, but they are cool people and they're real and they're straight up and they're who they are. And God has brought an amazing team of people. But I chatted to Abby and I, you know, I shared with her 
actually this last past year of COVID has been me just listening to hundreds of people talking about their refund and their journey and what am I going to do for them. And I recently met with someone and she said, oh, you know, I was trying to get my money back from, um, you know, the airlines. Oh, they have, you know, she said a few more colourful words, so I won't say those, about how they weren't supporting her. And then she was talking about her own business and in the place where she lives, they had a lockdown and it stopped her business and she had to look at maybe refunding. And she, she contacted me and she was like, I was like, oh my gosh. The reality was, you know, you do 450 refunds and it's hard work. And this last couple of years has been hard for me. And I feel, um, I said to Gary, sometimes I feel fragile. And, um, but yet you loved me in that. Thank you, Julie. So sometimes I'm not always up front, but I sit and I watch and I listen because it takes courage to change your career at this point in my life. And my family, you know, I love you guys. You walked that journey with me. And I love this family. You're really awesome people. So don't ever sit there feeling like you, you're not listened to, you're not cared for because there's someone there that is there for you. Just go looking, you know. And my journey here has been four years. I, and, and not long after we started, I fell over and I, um, I didn't break my ankle, but I tore all the ligaments off my ankle. And uh, so I was walking around in a moon boot for many months. And, and then we've had some family sad stuff that we had to work through. But in this time, this place has been a refuge. So know that this place is a beautiful place for people to come and be who they need to be. So I just wanted to share that that, you know, sometimes I sit there and I can go home and I said to Gary, sometimes I feel like, am I doing enough in this place? And Gary, uh, sorry, not Gary, Barry is the first to say to me, we didn't call you here to be our pastor. We called Gary. You're here to support him. Um, and he said, you know, you need to do what you need to do. Now, that's amazing grace, and that grace is here for all of us. You know, in your weakest moment, Gary talked about that this morning, you might be feeling like you're burdened. This is the place to be, guys, if you're feeling burdened. But be present in the place so that you can be part of it. I, I never forget, you know, when we, um, we popped in here once quite a few years ago, there was, you were having a barbecue out on the deck, and... Um, and Sarah said to me afterwards, she said, this, this place feels like home. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Crazy. Hey, look, I'm, I want to finish with this. Oh, I don't have to do that. Hey. We'll finish with this. I, what do I hope and pray for in terms of Glen Eden Baptist Church? Well, I pray that the impact of this church will continue to grow. that the tentacles of this place will reach every home in this community, the city and this nation. I pray that through a deep commitment to our mission, you know what I'm going to say, that we will find hope in Christ, that we'll be transformed by Christ and empowered through Christ to change the world. I mean, that's it. That's, boy, you know, when I came here, I just simplified everything down to that. Because if we find our hope in Christ, we found it. We found the answer and our purpose in life, right? And when we find that, He transforms us. He changes us. Not all at once. Sometimes that's a journey. But He transforms us. And He empowers us with the gifts to be able to go and do what He's called us to do, to fulfill His purposes. I pray that wherever... You find yourself through the week that others would see Christ in you. That you would love Christ so much that he would be the pearl of your life. And others would see that in you wherever you go. I pray that when people talk about this church, they would say, look at them, 
They love one another. Look at them. I pray that we would leave a legacy for the next generation. And if you're way younger than me, that you would think about the next generation leaving a legacy too. And that our legacy would be, number one, it would be Christ and hope in Christ. But I pray that as we move forward that our legacy might even be that we can financially support this church in the future. I pray that we would live generous lives, that we would be generous in love, that we would be generous in forgiveness, that we would be generous in mercy, that we would be generous in grace, that we would be generous in hope, that we would be generous in giving to the church and to the mission of this place and generous towards all people. And then finally, I pray that you will be able to stand in the face of persecution. Because friends, if you read what's going on in our world, if you are a follower of Jesus, a true follower sold out to Christ, life isn't going to get any easier. And I pray that you will be able to stand in the face of whatever comes at you, whatever the enemy tries to do, that you will be able to stand and say, no, I am a child of God. Back off, punk. Back off. Need to watch a few good movies just to get that going a bit more. Wow. Um, I want to tell you that, you know, there's been a number of prophecies around that... Uh, Talk about a new season, right? I'm going to tell you the season's here now. It's here now. You've been around for the last six or seven weeks. You've seen the Spirit of God doing things in people's lives. There's been a lift in the amount of prayer that we've been doing, the way we've been ministering to people. There's a lift in the presence of the Spirit of God here. He is here now. He's doing what He wants to do now. It's not something that's coming. It's something that's here. God never left. He's always been here. He's always active. He is alive and he's with us now. The Spirit of God isn't waiting for some kind of season to happen. The season of God is active now. We've just got to step into what he's got for us. We've got to step into it. So I encourage you to step into what he's got for you. Our today and our future is with God. Amen. Babe, you want to play? So Deuteronomy 10, 21, it says, He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Mm. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you, Lord. This is not just a reflection of four years, but this is a reflection of 62 years. Because, Lord, you've journeyed this church over many, many years. Lord, I can only reflect over four. But, Lord, what I see is I see your hand in this place. I see and notice your presence in people's lives. I see how people are coming to faith. I see, Lord, how you are healing people, how you are transforming people. I know your presence here when we gather, when we sing, when we worship, when we sit under your word, Lord. I sense what you're doing in our lives, and I want to thank you, and I want to give you praise, and I want to give you the glory. For the last four years, I give you that. For the future, Lord, we look forward as your children to walk with you into what you have for us in this place, in this community, nation, and world. Give us ears to hear your voice. Give us eyes to see your hands at work. That we might truly be children who follow their Father. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, something we didn't pray for today, as um, we didn't pray for the offering, so I want to do that just as we're finishing up. But as we do that, I wanted to acknowledge and honor the staff that we have here at Glen Eden Baptist Church as well. 
These are men and women who have foregoing the opportunity to make a lot of money anywhere else <laughs> because they sense the call of God to serve the people of God and to equip the saints for the ministry. And so their task is to know you, to feed you, and to protect you. And they do it well. And I want to honor them in the roles that they have. And so I mention that as we go and pray for our offering today. Because, you know, we made a commitment as a partnership to a certain level, and we are a little bit behind. And so I just, um, not, we're not in any danger because the staff have been really good in just watching the budget. We're doing this fine. But we are behind in terms of the giving. So I want to pray for that today. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for the staff in this place. And I want to honor them. And thank you, Lord, that you have called them and positioned them and trained them and released them, Lord, for the purposes you have here in this church and in this community. Father, we pray for the offering today. We pray, Lord, that you might do far beyond what we can ever imagine. Um, and Lord, it is for the purpose of ministry and mission. No one's getting rich here except the kingdom of God. And that's the only kingdom we're worried about. The only kingdom we care about is the kingdom of God. And so, Father, we pray as we sow into that today. We just pray you bless it and multiply it in your name. Amen.